This was played on November 11th, and it was the 11th round. So it was the 11th round on 11-11. Veterans Day. His opponent, Laios Portish. We have E4, C5, the Sicilian defense. Knight F3. D6. D4, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, an open Sicilian, knight F6, knight C3, A6 is Miguel Nydorf's variation, bishop G5, E6, F4, bishop E7, queen F3, queen C7 is the traditional line. Queen side castles. Queen's knight to d7 is the main line. Pawn g4, pawn b5. Bishop takes the knight. Bish uh, knight takes the bishop. Pawn g5 hitting the knight. Knight returns to d7. Pawn f5 trying to pry open the structure. Knight c5. And now h4 leaves the book. The book move is, and you'll find this in section 99 of volume B, the book move is f6, g takes f6, g takes f6, bishop f8, and rook g1. Ljubojevic goes with h4 instead. b4 hits the knight. Critical move. I thought um, an interesting move would be to sack the knight. Because if you take here, I'm taking here with check. King f8. I come over here. This pins my opponent's knight to his queen. And um, I grant that this is a bit speculative, but it grabs a lot of initiative. Metaphysician believes that h4 is within theory. It's not in the ECO, but I'd imagine it is... Uh, it, yeah, it's been played um, throughout history 32 times is what my database is showing me. Uh, when we talk about history, we're talking about master level history, not necessarily anybody and their brother history. So it falls within the realm of database theory, but not official ECO opening theory. Usually when I speak in th terms of theory, I'm, I'm referring to the ECO, not to the database. But theory means a lot to different things to a lot of different people. I mean, if it's ever been played, is it still theory? This is, is the question. F takes E. Oh, the move that I recommended um, after after B4. You've got the mega base. Nice. It'd be interesting to compare mega base with what I've got. All right, so anyway, H4 is played. I'm only showing 32 games. Um, hold on. Did I say 32? Yes. 32 games with H4.
I say only. That's still a lot of games to to reach a position after 14 moves. At, and, and again, that's at the at the master level. You know, if you have a if you're if you're a chess base owner, well, first of all, lucky you. Uh, I've always wanted chess base, but I could never bring myself to spend the hundreds of dollars <laughs> that it would take to get it. And plus, it's so complicated that at my age, I don't know, you know, that's a lot of... And when I was younger, I could learn things a lot better and more easily. I would need, like, every tutorial video in the book, I'm sure, to learn chess base to make it of any value to to my to me. If I had the money, I would get it. I mean, it comes highly recommended by um, Chess Dojo Live. Um, what's his name? Cassia, Castia, Cas. I, I forget. I always forget the third Chess Dojo Live guy. Not David Pruce and not um, Cry Jesse Cry, the other one. Anyway, h4, b4, knight c, e2. Metaphysics thinks that e takes is actually theory. Um, I don't know. Oh, it is in there. I've got eight games with it. I, I didn't actually use the database for that part. I just thought it looked interesting. Knight c, e2. e5. Hitting this knight. This bishop wants to come over here. Knight b3. But yeah, he plays it right away. It's It'd probably be better to take this pawn first. And the point is, if you take my knight, then I'm skewering your queen and your rook. Kostia. Kostia, that's it. Kostia. I don't know why I can't remember that kid's name. I mean, he's really good. I, I like his videos. I like all of their videos, but he in particular is, is really good. Well, they're all good. Jesse Cry's good. David Proust is good. They're all good. Boy, I, I tell you, the videos I really like on YouTube are those. I like the Ginger GM, Simon Williams. I really like uh, Gotham Chess um, YouTube videos. I don't like Gotham Chess Live. I don't know how he's such, he's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When he's Twitch live streaming, he's Mr. Hyde. When he's uh, YouTube content creating, he's Dr. Jekyll. His, his YouTube videos are so well done, Gotham Chess. But he's just kind of crude and cantankerous when he's live i don't know what what it is but we love eric rosen and you can't go wrong with jerry from chess network you cannot go wrong with jerry from chess network uh those just to name a few anything by susan polgar you're gonna love if you can get through her accent you want to talk about accents Sometime watch some videos from Jinji Kashvali. That's Jinji Kashvali. Jinji Kashvali. Jinji Kashvali. Oh, yeah. Roman Jinji Kashvali makes a series of videos. What's really funny about Roman Jinji Kashvali, and Naroditsky is excellent. I, I just haven't had time to view everybody is the problem. But... Uh, um, the funny thing about Jinjikashvili, which is the correct pronunciation of his name, by the way. However, I'm sure I've 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 got something like 300 videos by Jinji, and I'm sure in each and every one, he pronounces his name differently. 300 different pronunciations in 300 videos, just to keep you confused. <laughs> Where was I before I got on this tangent talking about other streamers? Omagaman has followed. Thank you for following. 
Yeah, here I am endorsing everybody else's channel. Now, there's a lot of good chess content out there. Let's just put it that way. All right, so Bishop B7, I, I do, I understand that was his purpose, but it, I thought it would have been much better, much more, much more um, significant after taking this pawn first. Yeah, yeah, Roman Jinjikashvili. We just called him Jinji when we were growing up because nobody could pronounce his name. But I can now. Jinji Kashvili. It's that simple. Just like it sounds. Just like it's spelled, I mean. Jinji Kashvili. Say it three times fast. <laughs> the knight G3, queenside castles. Bishop C4. It might be necessary. Again, your king is wanting to get safe, so it might be necessary to play king b1. It might be advisable to get rid of this knight. A couple of things you can do before bishop c4. So knight takes e4 here. Bishop d5, knight takes knight, queen takes knight, king b8, king's rook to e1, rook c8, threatening mate. This would be checkmate. So queen g2 defends. He'd like to get his rook up and over, if possible. Bishop takes the bishop, rook takes the bishop, queen b6. Critical move. Now rook e4. Boy, if he could safely get his rook here, that would be delicious. So perhaps a3 would be in order next. Rook c7. Okay, that's another approach. Yeah, I like that. Queen g4. King a7 gets out of the uh, b file. Rook takes b4 anyway, obviously. Queen e3, check. Queen f2 is a little bit more um, confining here. And it's threatening checkmate again. So, seems a bit better. You'd have to play rook d2 to, to prevent that. And then queen e1 check, rook d1, queen e3 check. Yeah, you're, you're, looking, um, you're looking like you've equalized here. Queen e3 check was played. King b uh, king b1. Uh, h5 is um, is not the best approach. He should go ahead and throw the check here, and then after this, this you'd have to go rook d2, and maybe you could just probably settle for the repetition here as well. I would think. Although white doesn't have to take a repetition per se. But anyway, Queenie one is surely at least maintains equality. By the way, you let's talk about Queenie one, Rook uh, D one. Let's talk about whether or not this would be advisable. Does anybody see the problem with queen takes this? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Anybody? Why is that a problem? Anybody? Isn't that free? 
No, it's not free, ladles and jelly spoons. Don't miss those crossfires. The reason I point this out is it's a very common mistake at uh, the amateur level among beginners overlooking these pieces far, far away. <laughs> Tricked you, didn't I? So H5, um, Queen D1. King's rook to c8, that, um, it does not, that's a mistake, that's a blunder. That may even bring out Captain Blunderpants. So rook b8 is the move to provide the best fighting chances. And after rook a4, once again, queen f2. Yeah, exactly, metaphysician. So rook h c8, queen f1, and... Um, Queen takes pawn is lethal because, as you can see, if takes, you only have one legal move, and then this is checkmate. So king a8 allows a, bit, a rook to block. White plays rook a5, putting another attacker in there, and it's the same thing. It's just different. I'm going to take. You'll have to block, and then I'm going to mate you on a7. He goes with rook a7 right away. But now, queen h1 check. And as you can see here, this is just uh, over. So, um, black resigned. Let's... Put the position in the computator and let the computator finish this off. He can block with a pawn, you know. That's about it. Um, let's put it in the computer. Okay, he blocked with that pawn. I didn't. I didn't actually uh, point that one out, but. That's why I'm not the computer. But he just has to clean up here. He's up a whole piece. Trade the rooks. I See, here I would have just traded rooks. Make it simple. This is a, a lesson for those of you who are amateurs and beginners. When you have a material advantage and you can force a rook trade like that, just do it. It'll be easier. Don't give him any counterplay at all. Don't give him any chance to leave any weapon on the board. Now, if you play perfectly, it won't matter. But what happens if you don't play perfectly? You're better off just getting rid of his weapons altogether. We'll go back to that position here in a moment after the checkmate is right here. Let's just go back to that so you can see it. Okay, right here. Just force the rook trade. Force the rook trade. You're up two pawns. It it it, it may not be the the uh, objectively best, but it's the simplest. Just force the rook trade. You're up two pawns and a knight. 